you. Randy, how are you? Fine, thank you. I, I was sorry to hear about your daughter. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, we all here? You must be Mr. Sanford. Yes, how are you? Well, you were all calling with pretty much the same questions. It seemed a good idea to meet with you all at once. I assume you've been given the routine information from the court that awarded bail, so as far as I'm concerned, you can just fire when ready. Yes, mister. Well, what's going on, John? I mean, we all know that there's no precedent for awarding bail on a capital case. Well, it's due process, Mitch. An appeal was made. It was granted. On what grounds? Two. The Harrington boy has no previous criminal record, and there were extenuating circumstances. Frankly, uh, personally, I uh, think that this whole matter is tangential to the case proper. Is it? Mr. Sanford? Let's look at the facts, Mr. Fowler. Bail in a capital case is unprecedented, yet it's awarded. The amount demanded is in six figures. It is met. And yet you say the whole matter is tangential. I think you'll find the entire Atlantic seaboard in disagreement, and I hope the whole country. We've seen enough of legal favoritism based on wealth and position. Uh, you may be a bit premature in your judgment. Maybe. But that's not the point. We came here to get your version of something that is highly irregular. Frankly, I find you exasperatingly indirect. Now, couldn't you be a little less diplomatic? Well, as I understand my job, Mr. Sanford, what I'm being is legal. Do you think that if the situation had been reversed and the young Chernak boy had appealed to higher court, he would be now out walking around? Perhaps if there had been extenuating circumstances? There wouldn't have been. It wasn't so much that they allowed bail, but that the figure they set was clearly tailored to a bank account that the average man will never see. Come on, level with us, John. Was it a power play? I have no way of knowing that. Well, what's your guess? I'm not in a guessing mood. Well, quite frankly, my paper sent me down here to get your guess. Too bad. We'll have to catch a train back to Boston. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. You've been amazingly helpful. Good day, gentlemen. Well, have we uh, touched all the bases? Have we touched any of them? Okay, how about a couple of shots, Mr. Fowler? Oh, I'm not very photogenic. No, 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 no. This will only take a few minutes. My paper needs it. If I don't get it, I'm out of a job. And you don't want that on your conscience, do you? All right. Okay. Hold it. Good. Let's get one over here. You're Elliot Carson, aren't you? Yes. Jim Fogarty, Hastings' son. Oh, yes. How do you do? I covered your trial. I didn't know you were a newspaper man. Well, I've had a little experience, but I still consider myself a neophyte. Matt Swain thought you were the man to succeed him. You are. Thank you. I'll say this. He's got his father's charm. Mm -hmm. And his acumen. We'll have to talk sometime. I'd like that. Hold it. Okay, now let's get one serious one over here. I think here. that's enough, Randy. <clears throat> okay, I'll send you a couple in the mail. Ready? And waiting. How about a beer, Mr. Fogarty? Mr. Carson? I'm sorry, I've got to meet a deadline. Come on, this time. All right, see you soon, sir. Bye-bye, then. Remember me to Matt. Right, I will. Well, Ed, you were awfully quiet. Mm. So were you. Since when did a press conference start without an opening statement? Well, didn't I follow Robert's rules? You didn't even follow the Marcus of Queensbury's rules. You accusing me of hitting below the belt? Well, let's just say that you presented some very fast bookwork. You're also very nice about letting other people voice your opinions for you. So that you don't have to go out on a limb yourself. And as a newspaper man, you object to that? As a man, I object to it. If you feel awarding Rodney Harrington bail is an instance of favoritism, why don't you say so? Why trade an innuendo? Maybe we should define our terms, Elliot. You call it innuendo. I call it discretion. 
The same discretion that you used in your open letter to the driver that hit Allison. Well, I noticed you were very careful not to do any branding yourself, but you put a red-hot iron in the hands of everyone else in town. Maybe I took a page out of your book. We both live in glass houses, don't we? figured out what I wanted to say. I thought it'd be easier to tell you here. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of at home here. Well, wouldn't it be easier just to forget about it? Not for me. Look, there's something you gotta know. Just for the record. Children take me for what I am. Women usually don't. They see the outside. Rough. And they figure that's what I'm like. Either they have nothing to do with me, or I'm some kind of prize animal. Is that what you thought I felt? I didn't. Not here, not when we were working together. You were the exception. You didn't run. You were so... gentle. So perfect, so... beautiful. And it was like some of that was rubbing off on me. But when you showed up at my place, I didn't know how to act. So you thought I was like all the other women. Oh, I should have never taken it out of this room. Why did you? It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Why? I saw what the children saw. Was that all? Was that all? Is that why you came up there to me? No. I've always had myself under control. I never felt that way before. Then why did you run away? You were so brutal. I thought that's what you wanted. I wanted to go after you. I was scared. I had to go. For one stupid moment, I thought about following you. But you were gone so fast. Where did you go when you went speeding down the beach road, Mrs. Fowler? Back to that neat little house where you could cry a little and feel humiliated in one of those nice, clean, everything in its place rooms? Where did you go when you went speeding down the beach road? It happened just a short way down the road. Hit and run. It was you. No. Yes, it was. No. It was you, wasn't it? No. I just don't believe it. 
I've seen you with these kids. You just wouldn't do that, leave a kid lying on the road. I panicked, Russ. I panicked. There was this sunset and the glare on my windshield, and I didn't have my sunglasses. And I was speeding. I looked out my side window. And I saw her lying there. Not moving. this man walking up from the beach and I thought he was headed towards the car that was parked there. I thought he'll see her. And he'll see me and I couldn't let him see me. I just couldn't. Who else knows? You didn't tell your husband. I told him I went shopping in White River. How was I going to explain to him what I was doing on the beach road? Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I've already seen Allison. Rodney, I think you're looking for some kind of an omen. Don't. If there's any small improvement, I'll let you know. Marion, I know what you're saying, but you have to try to understand. I've had to learn to be suspicious of everything that Rodney Harrington stands for. You mean you think he should forgive and forget? At least forgive. I wonder if you could do that, Doctor, if you were in his place. Mm -hmm.